The federal government is proposing to stop and deny disability benefits to veterans who are already receiving disability benefits. And if you don't quite understand what that means, let me break that down. Uncle Jerry, who was in Vietnam and lost both of his legs, made too much money last year, and now the disability payments that he got for not having his legs are gonna be denied. So he will get zero money to assist him in his life after losing his legs in service because he made a couple extra dollars more than what the federal government said that he should. Let's break this tidal wave of idiocy down so you can be as furious as I am. This might be the biggest topic I've ever tackled on this frickin' channel. Do you know who the Congressional Budget Office is? Pfft, I sure as hell don't. But apparently it's the administration the presidencies, this current presidencies, way of trying to cut the slack, find ways to spend less money. Hey, I'm all for that. That makes sense, right? We're kind of, inflation's up a little bit. Normally a pretty boring job like an IRS auditor, but they put out a report, a suggestion, an option is what they call it, in order to lower the deficit, save about $250 billion over the next 10 years. And it's to take away benefits from veterans who have already been receiving benefits because they're disabled. It's like pulling the carpet out from somebody that's on crutches. It's like pushing an old lady in a wheelchair down the stairs. Throw in a clip of that. Now you might say, AC, how? How could this possibly, this stupid, stupid idea, how could this possibly, like, move forward? How, and where is it even written? You're just saying a bunch of political mumbo jumbo, get me rile up. Nope. Just as a heads up, all the links are gonna be below so you can read it for yourself. And, well, let's just get into this, shall we? A means test. VA disability compensation for veterans with higher income. Now, what does a means test mean? Well, it's very simple. It means that if you can afford it, that means that you ain't going to get no benefits. So if you got some money in the bank, you are not going to receive any compensation for your injuries you sustained and confirmed and under are receiving them while overseas or serving. Kind of like these people they're about to describe. In 2021, 5.2 million veterans received disability compensation from the VA because of medical conditions. About 280,000, 4% of them received compensation for the first time this year. Service-connected disabilities vary widely in severity and type and include loss of limb anxiety, you mean spicy memories, aka PTSD, and hearing loss. Oh great, you're listing out the people that will no longer be receiving their benefits because of those injuries that they received. Really make yourself the good guys. These are truly charitable angels because they're stopping giving money to the injured people that they sent overseas. 2022 base compensation rates range from $150 to $3,330 per month. So $3,330 a month tax free is the maximum you can get for losing a leg overseas. All right. We should probably take that away from them, the lazy fucks, not even walking around anymore, scooting around on a wheelchair. Oh great, let's continue. Here's my favorite paragraph that tells you the mindset of these dopes that wrote this up. In 2021, the VA paid out about 110 billion in disability benefits, four times the amount that it paid in 2000. Even though the number of veterans in the United States declined by more than 30%. Spending per recipient rose from about $11,000 in 2000 to nearly $22,000 in 2021. What do you think happened between 2020 and 2021? It's almost as if the year after 2020, some substantial thing happened that led to the increase in disability payments from then to 2021. What years after 2000? Is it 2001? Was there a significant military event happening in 2001? Plane just hit. <gasps> right? Oh. oh my God! Another plane has just hit. It hit another building. Oh. And we do have some breaking news that we want to bring you right now. We're going to go to a picture, a live picture from New York City. Oh my gosh, that's right, I forgot! We was all just playing in sandboxes! We was just playing in the sandboxes overseas in the Afghanistan's and Iraqs. It's almost like a 
global war on terror. What was that middle word? War? Yeah, happened. Do people get hurt in war? I don't fucking know. I'm just a congressional bureaucrat trying to type up a deficit note to send it to Congress so that we can figuratively cut out the legs from guys that don't have legs. But let's get on to the real meat and potatoes here and what they're gonna do, what they want to do to disabled veterans. Thanks. Thank you, federal government. Under this option, the VA would means test all current, that means if you're receiving benefits currently, and prospective recipients of VA disability compensation beginning in January 2024. After that date, veterans would receive full payments only if their gross household income in the prior calendar year was less than an inflation index threshold for that year. Disability benefits would be phased out at a constant rate for veterans with income above the threshold. It says for every additional $2 of income that a home gets over a certain amount, $1, two to one, will be taken away from their disability. I know it sounds confusing, but let me break this down real quickly with the rest of the paragraph and you'll get it. I'll paint you a picture. Veterans whose gross household income was $170,000 or higher in calendar year 2023 and would have received an average annual payment would no longer receive any disability compensation from the VA in calendar year 2024. The income threshold below which veterans would receive full benefits in 2024 would be set at $125,000. Okay, follow me on this shitstorm train to hell. If you make $125,000 or less, your household, you and your wife, and whatever dependents you have make a maximum of $125,000 or less, you get to keep all your benefits. Good job. But if you make $170,000, you'll get zero benefits. Now the difference that we see between the $125,000 and the $170,000 is $45,000. Here's where the two for one magic happens. Every $2, that you make over the minimum of $125,000, $1 in the benefits that you're currently receiving would go away. So if you make $5,000 over the $125,000, that means $130,000, you would lose $2,500 in benefits that you're currently receiving. Doesn't that seem like you're getting punished for doing okay? There must be a different plan to compensate somebody that's got no legs and a wife and five kids that they gotta feed. So if they're making 170 because the wife's a nurse working overtime, busting her butt in medical school, and husband's sitting there wheeling around with no legs, well, he should get some benefits because there's still five kids that they gotta take care of. And that disability that he received overseas in combat, well, I mean, that's hard. It makes it hard to raise children with a disability. It's difficult. He should be compensated still, right? There should be a tier system. There should be, shouldn't there? There would be no adjustment in the income threshold for household size. You know what that means? <laughs> that means if you got kids or don't got kids, you're screwed either way. I mean, I'm sure it's harder if you have children. <laughs> to take care of, and being a wounded veteran, you know, that's probably harder. But they say, they say here, we don't give a shit. <laughs> Fuck them kids. Here's the part that sucks too. That 170,000, right? For this component, gross household income is defined as the income received by the veteran, his or her spouse, and any dependents in the prior calendar year. Income includes wages and salaries as well as unearned income such as social security benefits, investment income or withdrawals from a retirement account, but excludes VA disability payments. Oh, how nice they excluded something. So this means even if your wife makes 170,000, not take home, not take home, that's her salary. Her salary is in between 125,000 and $170,000 prior to taxes. So not even the money that she gets to take home. You're losing your benefits, baby. Just one dollar at a time, you're losing them until they're down to nothing. My God, it's almost like this would incentivize wounded veterans who would want to maintain their disability payments, the benefits they're receiving. Well, they might just give up and not work 
then become a lowly sloth piece of shit just zooming around on their fucking wheelchair like Stephen Hawking, except not doing a job because they just want to get their benefits that they earned. Oh, bummer. Let's think this out for a second, shall we? More so than these idiots that put this up for a vote eventually in Congress. Let's say that you're a 100% disabled veteran. All right. You get 100% disability payments. We'll say like 30, 40 grand a year. But you can still hop around at the Walmart and be a Walmart greeter for like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Just shaking hands, telling people good morning, I served for you while you hobble around on a cane because you lost your fucking leg to an IED. Well, the wife is a nurse making like, oh, I don't know, a hundred, hundred and ten thousand. Maybe she works harder, right, to get a little bit of extra income, hit some overtime. And what happens? Well, you combine your, you know, part-time income of let's say forty thousand dollars to her one hundred and ten. Uh oh, that's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. How much of those benefits are you losing? Well, probably like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of benefits. Well, wouldn't it make more sense for this guy who is already working and just trying to be a part of the community to not? do that job anymore and just give up so then he can do less but still receive the benefits that he needs? And what a quid pro quo that is. You're telling a guy that even though he's injured from his service and he needs that money in order to compensate or assist him in some of his medical shit that he needs done, well he needs to get an extra job, but we're gonna punish you for getting that extra job. We're gonna take away the money that we need to give you that you deserve for getting an injury because you're trying to get more money to probably assist in your lifestyle. Do these morons not realize that the disability compensation isn't just a, hey buddy, here's 50 fucking thousand dollars a year, thanks for being a veteran. This is money allocated to an individual who has had life-altering changes and because of those life-altering changes, more expenses pile up directly due to medical costs and those are supposed to assist in those medical costs. It's not a bonus because you got an extra purple heart. This is money set aside to assist him in an injury to continue life with that injury. Oh, but I'm just some asshole yelling at a camera in my spare bedroom. What the fuck do I know? I mean, let's just, let's just leave out the fact that $170,000 ain't shit for the cost of living in places like New York City or Chicago, Baltimore, whatever if you're living in a decent part of a highfalutin tootin' city. Effects on the budget. Don't worry about the effects on the veterans, all right, or those that are going to serve in the future. God bless them if they try. In 2024, the number of veterans who would no longer receive any payments would total one million and the number receiving reduced benefits would equal about 500,000. So let's put that together, 1.5 million. What was the number we learned about earlier with how many people are actually receiving benefits as of 2021? 5.2 million, 20%, 20% of all disabled veterans in the entire United States would now get zero of any of the benefits that they earned be for being injured overseas. And another 500,000, what's that like, oh, 10% are gonna get reduced? <laughs> they're just, they're, hey, you know what? I knew you were expecting like a couple extra bucks for some medication that you needed, but uh, instead of the $50 for it, we're just gonna give you 20. Deal with it. You've got loads of cash, you piece of shit. I really love the communist twist that they have here in the distributional effects paragraph. Veterans and households with higher income would have less income after accounting for reductions in or the elimination of disability compensation benefits. Those reductions would vary considerably depending on the veteran's disability rating and income. You mean household income? Not the individual, the whole household. So dad that's already got one leg missing and has to be carried into the shower by his kids can now be even more of a burden onto his family because mom makes too much money for him to individually receive his benefits. Here's my favorite line. Veterans and households with lower income would be unaffected. Fuck the well-off veterans, right? They're missing leg, arm, eyesight, PTSD, tinnitus, inability to stand up straight on their own because they've got spinal fusion from the roll over and their Humvee overseas, those guys with money, uh, they're evil. Money's evil, don't you know that? That's why they need to take it all back to the government where the good people are. <laughs> Makes sense, right? 
Fuck! Boy, I love this one. Economic effects. We touched about it, but they say it pretty nicely here. Some, some people in households with income above the threshold might change how and to what extent they participate in the labor market, either by reducing their number of hours or weeks worked or by dropping out of the labor force to keep full VA disability payments. Households that lost VA payments might save or spend less than they did before means testing was implemented, particularly those households with higher income who previously received relatively large benefits. Veterans in high income households with low disability ratings, therefore relatively small payments, would be unlikely to change their behavior. So they said what I said earlier. If you're at a job that makes $50,000 a year that's taxable and that takes away $40,000 of your tax-free di VA disability payments, why wouldn't you just stop working, earn less, and collect the money that you don't have to work for. Incentivizing veterans by taking away their money and forcing them not to work is probably a really good way to think about getting rid of them mental health wise and not just lining them up against a brick wall, which is basically what you're doing. Make them feel useless by making them useless. Wow, who the fuck thought this through? Now, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we're gonna see something interesting. It says related options. Watch what, you, what could be related to taking veterans' benefits away. Oh, what's that? NVA's individually unemployability payments to disabled veterans at the full retirement age for Social Security. Let's click on that, shall we? Well, this talks about individual unemployability. So if you're a disabled veteran, and are so injured that you cannot be employed, well, then you get additional benefits. The IU, Individual Unemployability Payments, benefits. But once you hit Social Security age, those go away because you know everybody knows that once you hit retirement age, you stop working. That one was short. There's another one. If you look even further, it says reduce VA's disability benefits for veterans who are older than the full retirement age for Social Security. Let's see what that one says. Well, there's only two paragraphs, so it starts with the second one. It's so good. You're going to love this. Under this option, veterans who start receiving disability compensation payments in 2024 or later would have those payments reduced by 30% at 67 years old. Social Security's full retirement age is 67 for people born after 1959. Oh, but good news! Their Social Security and pension benefits would be unaffected by this option. Because everybody knows that once you hit 67 years old, those injuries that you got overseas, they cost less money. So we can take away 30% of that disability payment for your loss of limbs and shit. <laughs> We don't want to give you too much free money, right? And by free, we mean sacrificing your body and getting blown up overseas and shit to places that we have to send you to and you can't say no to because you're in the military, right? Do what you're told, <laughs> right? Now, isn't that great news? Get your, you make too much money, no benefits. Ah, fuck your benefits. Ah, you got kids, fuck them. It doesn't matter if you got kids, you ain't getting none of your benefits if you make too much money. Oh, what's that? You can't work. Well, once you hit 67 and you still can't work, we're gonna take away that bonus of not working. Fuck you, you old crippled piece of shit. Oh, and what's that? You're getting disability after 2024 and you wanna collect social security at the same time? Fuck no, we're gonna take 30% on your disability because obviously you're, you've gotten better. This is going to go to Congress for their overall budget. Now you stinking weirdos better at least send this shit to your local representative, state senator, governor, everybody that holds a political office above you from your small town all the way up to the fucking president and say, how fucking dare you? My buddy veteran with the sign said it best. We always seem to have enough to pay for war, but never enough to cover the cost. Oh, we do. We do. I guess we're just not important enough. Listen up to me, veterans. All we got is each other. We're the only ones that look out for us. We're the only ones that can raise so much hell so fast that people above us have to listen. So here is my plea to you. For the future of every veteran that's going to serve, for those of you that are injured now currently serving and are going to stay in past 2024 and are busted but are not doing anything because, hey, I want to go to jump school. I don't want to get disability ratings. You need to send this video or a link to this bullshit that I am putting below here in the description to your senator, congressman, representatives, everybody. 
When this goes to Congress and is voted on for the budget, I want to see everybody that said yes, because those are the ones that will take advantage of you. Those are the ones that need to go. Somebody vote yes. Somebody vote yes. Now I know that this video is going to be demonetized because I said fuck a lot, but I was angry. And I can say words like that because I got cool sponsors like Bullet Safe who have amazing body armor level 3A that can stop 44 Magnum vests that are cheap, durable, and lightweight. And also, what I think is actually kind of cool, backpack inserts. So if you're in the security field and you want something discreet for your backpacks, or you need a vest because, hey, your security outside of a bar in Atlanta and sometimes a lot of pew pew and goes off down there. Well, hey, we got you covered. You wanna be tactical, Dad? You wanna be running through? Disneyland, like some kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, saving the kids, picking them up, protecting them with the cool bulletproof backpack vests. Bullet Safe's got you covered. And you know what? They've got you covered so much that they're giving you a discount. 10% off with Angry 10. With the way this government's going, every veteran should probably have one of these so that we don't get stabbed in the back by the people that are supposed to represent us. And if you stayed this long, you might as well support the channel and get a shirt. I made one for two videos ago when a bunch of Ukrainian soldiers were just dumping mines out, but I feel as though the shirt is super appropriate for this video. Here it is. I'm amazed at your stupidity, humbled by your bravery, and not at all surprised by your laziness. Way to go, government. Check them out at angry-cops.com. I lost my train of thought. Oh.